Are we live? Are we live? Okay, I think we're live. Hey everybody, happy Friday. Um, so this is kind of an experimental... Um, okay, I'm just gonna restart this and we'll see. No, I think we, I think that was recorded. So this is a, an experimental um, stream where I want to just stream something that I would probably normally just do in a video, but just have, you know, chill time, relaxing and doing the actual study process uh, for a few hours at least. Um, and just so that you guys can follow along. So if you look in the description, you can see that all of the references I have here for how to, you know, steal all of these poses, because that's what we're going to do. We're going to do some pose theft in this video here. But all these references will be in the link in the description, the first one. It's just Pinterest. I have my I made my secret Pinterest board available to you all. It's a board that I use to help, that I'm still using to help build my style. But uh, it was it was secret, but now I've made it public. So take advantage of it now. Follow me on Pinterest. Um, so yeah, what I did was I just put all them here in Photoshop. But you can do this in Procreate. You can do this in whatever program. Just download them. And then I'm going to go ahead and desaturate it, make the opacity opacity pretty low. And then I'm going to draw over it. I'm going to show you guys how I steal poses, how I try to take some of the really cool poses I see um, some artists doing and break it down into something that I can understand and then use for myself. Right. We're, we're thieving here. We're thieves. So I'm going to start off with one that's going to be pretty easy, because this is actually a pretty challenging thing to do. It's not that easy. I think this one should be okay, because I I think it's with the ellipses and stuff, it's pretty easy to see what's going on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and work with this one. So what I like to do is just start off by trying to figure out how can I represent the torso, the chest, the rib cage, basically, in a rectangular box like that. Just like this. Right. Anybody can draw this. Anybody can draw that. That's, that's easy, right? It's a box. So this isn't as, uh, this is more challenging than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, it's pretty complicated because the rib cage is a round object. So I like to try to find where the opening would be, you know, because the rib cage is like that. So I try to connect those lines usually. And you can see it's kind of curving, but we want to make sure it stays a box. Um, that's how you're going to learn to do all this stuff better. So I think I'm just going to go and pick the direction her neck is in. Um, you can kind of like use, compress the boobs into the torso, depending on what character you're drawing but that can kind of change the angle things are going in. So you want to be careful. And so right now I see I'm doing this wrong. So this is a pretty challenging one because it's like we're looking at her from below and she's bent over. So you got to think about the bend and you've got to think about, okay, I'm looking at her from below. So I'm actually going to change this to be like this. This is one risk with picking uh, references to do this with. You have to be, first off, you have to pick like references that are, of course, good, you know. Pick references that are better than what you can do. Like everything here, these poses are better, way, way better than what I could do without reference, right? And I'm pretty sure these like, all these artists didn't really use too much reference for these poses because I don't, I don't know how you could find somebody doing that exact pose, right? Or this one, it's gonna be pretty hard. So as you can see, I'm getting a nice, simplified version of that. All right, I think it's pretty decent. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing for the shoulders, but for the shoulders, I kinda just, I haven't really studied the anatomy that much, so I just like do these triangle shapes to get the deltoid in there. I don't really pay attention to it. I just like get that triangle shape, but I really make sure that rectangle for the torso is accurate. Um, and then what I like to do for the arm is I like to use 
uh, cylinders. So I try to imagine before the elbow and before the actual shoulder joint. I'm going to try to start a cylinder. And again, I'm going to keep this very rigid. It's like I'm not going to curve the cylinder. I'm just going to make it a cylinder. Right. And you're going to see I don't actually always stick to these rules, but just for this example, I want to make it really simple. So again, if I tend to draw this, for example, that's kind of like the elbow. If you can kind of think of it that way. I don't really draw them in. I just usually just draw the main parts in. And then for here, I kind of draw like this in because the wrist kind of goes like this. And then the hand is like that, right? The wrist kind of like goes on top, right? Yeah, it doesn't just connect like 90 degrees. So that's this kind of circle that I'm drawing here because she's really arching her hand down. And so in this case, the cylinder I'm drawing is kind of bent. It's like that, but I think that's necessary. I'm giving myself permission to do that because her hand is really posed in an exaggerated way. So I'm just going to connect those like that. And do the same thing over here. Now this is also a tough pose because we straight up can't see. She's got armor on, right? So same thing like that. And then I'm just going to skip that shoulder joint here and try to estimate, okay, it's probably going to be 90 degrees. And I'm just going to do that for like her bicep. And I'm just drawing through again for this example. Normally I wouldn't do that. Um, you'll see what I mean. And then this is going to be the kind of more challenging part. So we're going to try to simplify the pelvis. And so usually here what you want to do is find the uh, ilia crest and the more you know about anatomy the more this will help uh, i'm trying to make sure that i'm not getting the wrong perspective here yeah so you got to try to imagine her pelvis and simplify that it's not it's not too easy to do that um, but you can clearly see like that's those are the the iliac crest i think yeah and then the pelvis would be like this in there i'm pretty sure and then i usually just draw add another triangle for the crotch area and we can see that this area is just going back like if you were to draw a line here right it's just kind of going back in space and so let's hide the lower layer you can see what we've got and then what i do is like okay i can just go ahead and take create a cylinder for the legs so this is the knee i'm gonna stop before that create another cylinder make it straight same one here this one's even more foreshortened so we can tell this leg is like if we were to draw a square for the bo uh, box for the like a cube for the knee it would look like that going inside the uh, the thigh here so I'm gonna draw another one another ellipse And I'm going to draw another ellipse here. Now, this is going to be hard to visualize if you're not used to thinking in 3D yet, but that ellipse is that short because it's going all the way back into space. But this one is the same size, but it's much longer because her leg is going straight down. Perpendicular to our view, or that one's going parallel to our view, so it's going to be short. Um... And so yeah, that's really the main, th the main part of the pose. And so from here, you can kind of see, we've got this really easy to understand diagram. And if you were able to draw this for yourself, it would be pretty cool. Like this would, I would be really happy to 
to have to be able to draw this and you can easily see the proportions right it's really nice i can sell this is the upper part of the thigh getting thinner the knee would be here it's getting thinner again to where the ankles would be you can tell that we're looking at her from below this is where her belly button would be right and if you want to really you know give yourself a challenge you can do the same thing with the head And I say it's a challenge here because it's not so much a challenge to trace it, but to draw it on your own. It's, the head is the hardest to do with this kind of thing. So that's a kind of a quick diagram of the head and where it's kind of facing in 3D space. So if I hide it again, you can see what's really going on. And so I like to use this because it's like, okay, I can take these Ideally, the practice would be that you draw this again on your own and then you can tweak things um, as you want. And I like doing this with artwork because when you're looking at photographs, it won't be stylized. And so it can be hard to tell if this is actually like an appealing. You'll get used to this look of proportions. This also helps you with proportions as well. But with photographs, it's harder. But it's good for like learning how to construct these things and recognize pelvises and rib cages and stuff because then you won't have any distortion that the artist might have done right like this one for for example is pretty distorted um but i still thought it would be a fun one to try so now i'm going to do them the way i would do them um and show you the difference it's not too different but i'm just trying to scoot in here so i don't have to hold my head up as much but you'll see what I like to do is again, so here, this is kind of tricky, right? It's still a really tricky one. Her belly is going down that way, but her chest is going down that way. So I just like to pick something because you, you won't always be perfect, especially if you do this with photographs because photographs will lie to you. So I just like to pick something because at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, we're stealing the pose, but um, if it's not exactly the same pose, it doesn't matter. And you can't really steal a pose. I hope you get the joke by now. Can't copyright poses. So that's what I do for the cage here. Some I used to like draw a sphere here to kind of give me that indication of that's where the, the body bends. I don't really like to do it as much now, but I'll just do it here for the sake of demonstration. And this one is really stylized, so. I should have brought in a diagram of the skeleton here, but maybe I'll save that for like channel members or something. But yeah, again, just to clarify, this is like an experiment because I'm thinking of doing stuff like this regularly when I release channel memberships. Um, but I just wanted to see how, how it kind of works. I think it worked in the past before, but it was a long time ago. Um, where I just did like a tutorial in a live stream. And, you know, I tried to make sure I didn't waste any time in the beginning, so anyone who clicked on it, they could watch for as long as they wanted to. And they feel like they got it. They, they can move on. It's like they got the benefit of a whole YouTube video with like none of the effort on my part. <laughs> So that's me basically, you know, reducing that. And uh, this is something Ethan Becker said in a video, I think where he was like, stop using ovals. And the point of this is to help you also learn how to properly see things. Because I want to make a video on like, trashing a lot of like, how to draw books and stuff where they tell you, Instead of what I just did, they'll be like this, this crap. They'll be like, yeah, just do the oval, and <laughs> this, this stupid crap. And they'll, they'll just section it off like this and tell you like, oh yeah, just copy the shapes. And like, then they'll be doing stuff like this. Sometimes I don't even know how you just try to make it look 3D. And like, that doesn't help you. It's so ambiguous. Like just doing these random you're just cutting it in parts on a surface level. It doesn't really help. 
You need to learn what's above, what's the top of what you're drawing. You need to know what's the bottom, the left and the right side, and the front and the back. You know, not always, because like, for example, there's no front or back of a cylinder. But you know what I mean. So you need to be able to know that. That way you can correct yourself and see, okay, is this correct or not? And this is the right perspective. Is this the right proportion? And so this is also a good way to try to steal people's style too, which is also something I advocate. You just steal everything. Because I say that again because I know you can't really steal someone's style. It's very, very hard to do that actually. And no one really wants to do that. Everyone just wants to take a little bit of it so that they can make their own style, right? Because it's, it's not really that fun to steal someone's style. You just and completely replicate it. It might be impressive if you can do that, but you'd feel dead inside, wouldn't you? So here we can see this is helpful because we have our, uh, our hair that gives us that line for the ellipse face going down. It's the top of her head and I'll draw a line around it for like where the ears would sit. This is a tough exercise. I would normally, if I was really serious about doing this, I'd do like a another layer because arms usually always get in the way. If I had this, you can see this looks pretty cool. Like you can really, really get, see that relationship of the torso size, right? It's pretty easy. I think a lot of people could figure out how to draw the rest of the, the body in here, you know? Add it, stylize it how you want. That's another thing you could after doing this. This is a, uh, instead, if you're not ready to just copy that over, you could just look at the reference and copy this over to the side and look at the reference and try to fill it in like this. And then bring it back and see if you understand what you did, you know? But again, the point of all this is doing really real shapes, you know? This is a bad example. I'm talking so much. It'll get less in the later parts of the stream where I just do more examples, but. So like that is a box, right? That's a cube. Nothing's, there's no curved edges. It's just, it's a cube shape, right? Kind of just rectangular prism. Then there's a sphere. Right. Wow, look at that. Then there's a cylinder. You know what these things are. You learn them in school, all right? Boom. You know what they're supposed to look like. They don't have the rules to make them. This is another example of something. And so you use only these shapes. You don't pick up new ones unless you're, you know, just doing something in between. You try to use as much of these shapes as you can. That way, you know you're really understanding what's going on. Right. So I'm gonna leave that one, because I, I think drawing over it will just get confusing. This one will be fun. The, after learning this exercise, this made me actually enjoy doing back views. Because uh, back views used to be so scary to me. But now I love drawing the back. It's easier than drawing the front for me. Um, so here, what I see now is this, this shape. I don't even have to draw over it. I see this. This just shows you how important perspective is. Um, where would that go? Yeah. This is extremely distorted perspective, but that's pretty much what's going on here. Right. And then her neck and then her head is over there. Right. Butts over there. That's pretty much what's going on. But I'm gonna try to ignore the shoulder. You don't have to see like, whoa, I brought my preferences up. Like, cause you know, a rib cage is like this. Whoa, what is going on here? Why did the color change? 
So like a rib cage is like this. Pretty hard to draw. This this doesn't mean you can stop doing your like proco homework, but I'm just saying this is this is pretty hard to draw, right? That's like the back view of it. But you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just if you represent it in something that has a top, bottom, left, right, front, back. You've got a really good starting point. Right. So she's twisting here. Let's draw another ball there. And once you learn more about anatomy, you'll know, yeah, that's the iliac crest there. That's the iliac spine, I'm actually meant to say. Right? And so what happens with that spine is it goes down and it usually forms like the the underwear shape and that you can I always draw underwear because it, it really really helps you figure out what position uh, just figure out the shapes in general and so this is okay I know that this side is facing me here hmm actually this is tricky she's moving her leg back She just has a really enlarged butt. <laughs> that is <laughs> like most figures. She has like this shape pelvis box, which I usually that's like really sharp. Usually it's like that. It's like hers is like this. So this is hard. You'll, you'll eventually learn like where the buttocks, you know, the butt muscle looks like that. How that sits on the box. Gluteus Maximus. Yeah. Because her leg is bent out and then towards us. So it's like curving back out. And then I'll go right back to the rules. All right, draw a cylinder. Now the cylinder doesn't start up here. Remember, like this is still her pelvis and her butt. We this the thigh starts like right down here. All right. Boom. Now, if you want to, you can get technical and this is how I would do it again um, once you learn some anatomy you'll learn that the calf muscles do that and kind of wrap around this is still really abstract because I'm not as familiar as I should be then these muscles do that something like that and this helps you realize that the neck is bending back like that, right? That's where the calf muscle is going and it splits down. So even this, like her calf, there's a front and a back. This is the back side. It's not over here. It's not in here. It's over there, right? So she's twisting her leg out and then it goes back to being straight down here. And so naturally for this, I would just draw something like that just to help me remember where the ankle bones are. I'm going to do this for the heel. Alright. Just simplify that. Again, come curving back around. Like this. That's the heel. Let's actually do her arm here. Again, here, I would just do this triangular shape. I found you can really just like do that and you can get away with shoulders. At least for my <laughs> the skill, I'm okay with my drawings for now. And the, this is really more complex because like this part is like really flat here, but 
Eventually I'll get better and I'll actually tell you how to properly do that, but for now, <laughs> this is all you got. Mm -hmm. Subscribe to my YouTube membership. I was thinking of like slowly learning things every month and then doing this tutorial for YouTube members. Which would be a great incentive for me to like take time to study something specific because I really don't like doing that. For example, like hands, I really need to do that. If you're just coming in, make sure you uh, watch the beginning of the stream at some point so you know that you can't just sit here and do this and think that you're just gonna magically get better, but. There's, there's more steps to the process. So let's look at what we got. See how like clean this is? It isn't just random stuff. We're really, we made a box here, right? We made that box. If I wanna draw the part that we can't see, it all lines up. That like triangular prism box. And then this pelvis line that I drew, it all lines up to be a perfect shape like this if I just showed it to you head-on right but we just rotated it to fit exactly where the artist did right and you can get a clear you see like that flow and the rhythm of the leg here it's turning back it's really good and then you can see the proportions of how small this rib cage is and like you could easily build off the rest of this and then find the way where the spine goes and you won't even have to draw like a really detailed rib cage as long as you have something that's gives you a lot of information like these boxes with the sides right it really helps this is how i kind of for me like when i do figures i at minimum draw the rib cage box and the pelvis boxes that helps me a lot um, this is going to be a challenging one because this is a very gestural sketch. I don't know who did this, but... And it's just a really challenging pose, I mean angle, too. So I think we're seeing the bottom of the ribcage here. Again, ignoring the shoulder. You should almost think of like... This is how I think of it. The shoulders are just like floating on top. I just think of the rib cage as its own thing, and you realize how skinny it is. Jeez. Like the way this person drew it, it's almost like it's curving that way. But I'm gonna try to just stick to my guns here. Let's see how she's like leaning forward. That that bend where that goes that way and that starts going that way. That's the iliac rest I believe and then this is the iliac spine spine see how it goes back like that that's what you get from your proco videos proco homework um, so she's thrusting forward so I'm gonna say that I was doing that This is tricky. I'm trying to imagine where the other side of her hip is in 3D space. Not easy. Especially since this person didn't necessarily adhere to like complete accuracy. But we're training ourselves to see, and then you see the glutes are just like slapped on top, like uh, peanut butter. If you imagine like a like a bread knife and you just have like a glob of peanut butter on top and you just spread it on top of your bread right you just have two like pads of peanut butter that's how I think of it so they just and then of course you got to know like how the butt compresses based off of the leg com position right and then see how that line is going up Right? That line's going that, that way, because since the leg is going back, this creases. If the leg was going um, inwards like that, 
I think it's she's just tensing her glutes anyway. But if her leg is relaxed, usually the butt falls like that. Like the line usually goes like that. But if she moved her leg really, really far back, it would be like that. It would be like that, right? Her butt would be like squished. And if it's loose, it's just like that. Um, then, yeah, so I will go all the way down here to when the cylinder starts. Stop before the knee. And when I'm drawing these, pay attention to like which side we see, right? You have to be consistent. So like this is the side that we see because we're looking at her from below and we're still looking at her from below here. But I would say it's iffy here. We might, I think the eye level is here because we're looking above this point of the leg but we're still definitely below her knee, right? In this case, I just want to simplify it to a cylinder again without adding the calf muscles. And just as example, again, when you're doing this, your first time, you're going to mess up and be like, I'll, I've often get this far and I'm like, well, the rib cage is completely wrong. You know, it's not that easy, which is why it's, it's good. I like finding exercises like this that aren't too hard, that you can really easily tell that you're learning um, still. Because you're drawing something that isn't on the paper. Right, so you can st we can really clearly get a sense, and let's actually shade in the parts of her leg that we uh, we see. Right, so I'm not going to shade that in, but this part we see, we see this part because we're under her. We see that part because we're under her. Right, and then we would see that surface too. So you can get an idea of the perspective, the proportions, that flow, the leg here. Really nice. You basically see this pose is really just like the delta half-life symbol like that. All right. You can see how tiny the... This is something I really realized, like I really realized with the style I like to draw in. The rib cage and upper body is just a lot smaller. This will be a lot more equalized, especially in, in, if somebody was in this pose. You start getting an eye for style, proportion. Well, this one's really hard. Another thing you can think about is like these breaks. So this, the spine or the rib cage. Uh, thank you for, I think that was a sub, <laughs> but I missed it because it's so small on my screen, but I appreciate it. Let me see if I can see it in chat. Thanks for the sub, Magic Fresh. Nice. All right. Whoa, pulled up Discord for some reason. I'm glad I turned that off. Um, there we go. Back. All right. What was I saying with the ribcage? Yeah, so the ribcage like breaks up like that and then comes back around. So there's like a break there. Then there's a break here where the uh, pelvis starts. Then it comes back around for her butt. And then comes up here and then it goes like that for her neck. So you should always be thinking about those breaks. And then it starts like that for her skull. All right, same thing here, skull. I'm just loosely doing this now, skull. Um, whatever part of the spine is, I know this is the thoracic, I think, right? And then lumbar, and then whatever that part is, sac sacral, I think, right? So that should help you know, like, okay, there's gonna be a plane, like that's gonna be an angle. This is gonna be a different angle. This should be the same 
Notebook depends on how you're drawing this. If you're drawing this for the rib cage, it will be the same as this angle. But if you're drawing this for the shoulders, it can be different from this angle. So all these angles can be different. And they often will be different, right? So this is like that. If you're just doing this for the shoulders, then for her rib cage, I'd say it's like this. And for her pelvis, I'd say it's going like that. Right. And so you can kind of think now, you can kind of see this, like imagine a sheet of paper just perfectly in line with her back like that. You start seeing things like this. Things slowly get easier, slowly but surely. Yeah, in this case, this is what I would do. I wouldn't do the box in this case. <laughs> I think I've, you've got the point by now. I'm just going to show you how I would do all these. Her rib cage is so rib cagey, such a clear rib cage shape, <laughs> that I just go ahead and draw it in. Because it's also good to know, like, this part is where breasts stop, unless they're fairly large. It's usually where stomach goes down and then comes out down again and then starts that pelvic area I'm not gonna fill that in though and here the belt kind of gives us a hint remember the peanut butter I feel like this one's gonna be wrong, but whatever. Remember, I'm not starting this over here. Like that that would be her underwear line. The this is still her butt area. It's not until here where we can really say that's her thigh. Right? If any, if you need help doing that, just start with that one and realize that this has to be the exact same angle. You can't you can't have that and then that and then do that that would never work unless it was really really foreshortened right So this is really tricky here. Sometimes here I like to just draw a box for the knee. I used to be an adventurer like you, but then I took an arrow to the knee. And you can see I drew that too short. This, this is where it starts to get confusing, right? But I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Make sure you draw this properly. Like, don't just do a random tiny ellipse if it's not really that tiny. This will be tough. So, see that cylinder shape kind of helps us put the butt there? So, this is her butt would look. Probably drawing it a little bit too big. Right, let's make sure we make it somewhat G-rated. Put some underwear there. And so this gives you the ability to draw, figure out the pose, even with subtle, subtle clothing. When there's a lot of clothing, this gets really challenging to do and really fun and rewarding. But then you gotta make sure, you know, sometimes the pose doesn't matter if they have so much clothing on that the clothing is part of the silhouette and the pose wouldn't work or the image wouldn't work without um, the clothing. So let's hide this again, see what we've got. See? It's pretty cool 
easy to approximate pose, and you can see we've got those shoulders there, that shoulder line. And we can easily add a head looking in this direction, that line there. Boom. Stole the pose. We got it. This one I really, really liked. I'm probably going to use this. So is this the first one? This is the first, like, real, true 3D thing that we're doing. So these ones you can really have fun on because it's actually like truly going to be correct this is uh some sort of um figurine And all this stuff is going to vary, obviously, depending on the style, body type. But it's going to be pretty much the same thing. And to be honest, it's really easy to learn one body type and then just make sure you learn these things and then you can start to move on. Same reason why a lot of people just do one face. If you can draw one face at every angle, Drawing other faces at every angle will be a lot easier. Mixing and matching, if you're trying to do like a study on faces at every angle, adding different types of faces while you're doing that is going to make the study take potentially much, much longer. Oof, uh, I drew that too low. So I like to draw this and try to imagine that's where her spine is going into here. not quite accurate. Hmm. Just gonna accept that. Alright, so we've got the peanut butter here. So I'm gonna actually draw this the way I would have drawn it if I was copying it. as like an anatomy study. This torso does not make any sense to me. How is her neck going up that far? This is sus. Oh well, it's just a study. I can change it. So like I said, that iliac, iliac spine comes down. Usually goes right, right into the start of the butt right there. And it forms a perfect angle if you go to those like dimples there for um for a like bikini. And that bikini shape can help you a lot help you out a lot. And if I was doing this myself, my study drawing would look like this. Now this isn't how I do the traceover study, this is just how I would do if I was drawing on my own next to it. Just so you can see what that looks like.
Ah, uh, did I hear a donation? Thanks so much for the dono. That was a very quiet ara ara. Uh, where is the dono? Wait. What? Wait, I didn't see. I'm seeing people say like 150. Where's the dono in the chat notification? Oh my gosh, thanks, uh, Maria. I don't know what currency that is, but thank you so much for that donation. You said thank you for the tips. Question, do I do a video focused on the use of layers in Photoshop for those of us who are just starting digital? Um, layers, um, I feel like I have talked about that a little bit in one of my Clip Studio videos. I don't really, use layers that much unless I'm doing a very detailed like full rendered piece so it's not something I really do often um, but correct me if I'm wrong because I, I usually just use layers in order to separate like my lighting strategy but that also sounds like a good uh, good tutorial example for when I do channel memberships <laughs> thanks for the idea um, so let's see how this looks so yeah, all right, see we, we broke that down into something uh, anatomical, all right. Doom, doom, doom. Now let's do a hard one. Um, one that I, yeah, like this one I got, I selected this cause this is like very, very 2D. Um, these types of the style and so it's going to be challenging to kind of like make this into 3D but you know they still look really good because they know 3D stuff right so let's see if we can do it um, in this case I think I want to go with a regular rib cage again Just because uh, the person who did this really capitalized on that shape. But you see that? See how these, these points are right there? That's telling us that this is the front, that's the side. Right. So that means this is facing this way, her chest is facing that way. We twist, our body twists and stuff, it's pretty cool. Now I gotta figure out how all this is working out. see in this style she got some big old legs right and then the peanut butter would be on the back here but I'm gonna erase that and then see this is really tricky right because it's like ah oh, the leg is compressing so I'm just gonna kind of guess it's like this start this one off don't lose me now now see this is where it's stylized again right because it's curving but I'm just gonna straighten it for demonstration's sake I'm only gonna do half her body so like here this is again I would just do this Sometimes I actually make it like a triangular shape like that. And 
let's see how this looks. Yeah, so you can see what's going on here. All right, this is in front of us. Like that. Now, let's see. This one. This one's really, really flowy and stylized. Let's see if we can kind of make it more rigid. <laughs> or make it adhere to some rules so that we can understand it and use it for ourselves. Alright, so we see she's got some pretty wide hips here. Oh, thanks for the donation, MeWe Arts. Hello, you have... Have I made or planned to do a tutorial on this subject? Uh, appreciate learning about study techniques. Everyone tells you to study how to study. Yes, I'm actually planning to do a video on that pretty soon. This is one of the many methods. Um for how to study anatomy that I recommend. Um, I think I've come up with quite a few really good things that I've done in the past few years that have helped me get to where I'm at now. Because I really didn't start drawing figures until 2017. I only did portraits before then. It's getting really hot in here for some reason. I'm going to make this one really complex. Just draw every single part. You can see the proportions on this are pretty weird, but still something we can break down. Now I'm going to steal one of Ahmed al -Duri's. Pretty sure. This is one of his drawings. Hmm. Is the stream lagging? weird I don't see any issues in my in my uh, streaming my broadcasting software hmm 
Hopefully it's not buffering. Yeah, I have no idea why it's doing that. Is it still lagging? I guess it's my internet connection then. says stream status is poor but I don't see any drop frames uh. now it says excellent connection I think it's just YouTube's fault or my internet connection was getting dodgy there for a second This is a great rectangle example. See how he's stylizing this to be curved like that? or for the shoulders for now. For feet you can do a number of things. Especially if they're in heels. See how elegant and clear this poses? I really understand it now. You can see this is that surface is really clearly angled that way. This is that way. There's a bend here. You can see how our arms are pointing back onto each other in 3D space. Very clear. How the legs go like that. Very nice. This is a crazy one. Let's see what we can do here.
Hmm. I'm gonna have to disagree with this artist here. I feel like we would not see that side of her butt cheek at all since her leg is pointing this way. Like this, it would just get so obscured. It would be so loosened. This looks very contracted. I think they just did that just because like her legs should be like this if we were going to see that like her legs would have to be right next to each other like that. So you sometimes find little mistakes there. I'm pretty I'm pretty damn sure <laughs> this should not be there <laughs> because the leg is this way. Maybe they were trying like they were thinking of making her like fly and they changed their mind. Or maybe they just wanted to show that extra extra butt cheek in there. You know. Just cheat. Get some more clicks. Okay, this is the knee. Bring in this down like that. Skip the knee again. I'm gonna do this. It's real simple. This one, I don't even know if I want to try to pretend like I know where this cylinder would be, but I know where that one is, so let's just copy it up. Make a bigger one. There we go. Nice. Oh, I just realized she doesn't have a full arm here. Oh well. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see how that one looked without. Wow, look at that. Look at this. This is clearly that that line of action right there. Whoosh. Alright. This is perfect timing for this for me to figure out this bufferings thing. I'm gonna take a break. And then we'll come back, I think for another hour, to do some more examples and show you how to prove to you that I actually can draw in case you think all I do is trace and we're just gonna do one of these like how I would do on my own. Um but yeah, that sucks that it's lagging. I'm, I'll come back and try to figure out, maybe I'll just plug an ethernet cable in.
Okay, we're back. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys um how to do this. You the next goal, the next level of uh, practice you should just strive to get to should be being able to um basically do this without tracing it. You just look at it. Now, you could take some steps in between, but ideally this is where you want to get to. Right. So I'm just going to mask out some areas that I want to draw on. This one's going to be really hard to do. Come on, stop. Okay, let me mask this really quick. It's gonna be really hard. I'm make a fool of myself on the stream. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, guess I had no choice. All right. Let's. Go to this layer. Is it lagging again? Sorry guys, if it's lagging again, it's just YouTube's fault. I'm hooked up to Ethernet. My PC's not lagging. I see no drop frames. Um, so, YouTube has been laggy for me today. So it's either that or just my connection on the uh whatever net provider what do you call this yeah isp connection level is bad so sorry there's not much i can do about it if it's really bad i'll just re-upload this but hopefully i won't have to it doesn't seem to last too long anyway um what's the first one i want to do okay this one so now I'm going to do this how I would for my own study.
And these feet are way too small. <laughs> oh man. about this. This leg should be like that. here see what I messed up on yeah I didn't do um still not sure yeah I definitely didn't I did a it's a common mistake. I didn't make the perspective as intense as it is in the reference. I kind of made it flatter. I also think I might have done the legs too big in general. So now I have officially stolen this pose. Right. So I could have my own character's hairstyle. Right. And a different weapon, let's say it's a it's a big hammer. A giant hammer. <laughs> right. And that's the handle. And I stole it. And I could add all the details and everything later. So let's do another one. That one was pretty challenging. Oh yeah, this one is going to be hard because it's very, very stylized. If you're wondering about the music, by the way, right now it's from um, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. I love listening to these ambient tracks because they're extremely low key.
In this case, I think she'd be facing downwards. So now I've stolen this pose. I can make it my own character. Right. I can make it. I don't know any details to add that would indicate this, but I can make it Tifa from Final Fantasy since we were listening to that earlier. Right? And it still has that really nice energy of whoever worked on this from. I feel it's from Disney or Pixar. It says Brianna Myers or something? But yeah, this is a very Disney, Pixar looking sketch. A lot of energy here. I actually really like this one. All right, that, that energy, the tightness pulling apart, we got it, it's in our repertoire. We stole the style, it's ours now. You see, that's what happens when you do these studies a lot and then you do these studies on photos and then you do this practice and then you do this practice with photos as well and then you have to draw less and less stuff so let's try and do this one here this one's gonna be challenging because it's like very very thin very elongated style These are probably too big. Hi, I'm really sure where her arms are going.
I definitely made her too long. If you want, you can always go and look at what you messed up and overlay it. So if you did the tray study already on that one, but I could do it after this and we could figure out what we did wrong. Which is really, really a good way of studying. Alright, see those proportions are really crazy off, but... <laughs> I think they get the point across. That's a little bit closer. But yeah, she's very lanky anyway. That one's really hard. Did I put one before that? Come on. Okay, let's do this one. This is going to be, this is an interesting one. Oops. Can't have that. Can't be getting demonetized. How am I going to buy more iPads? This one has a lot of clothes, so it's going to be even harder.
making some corrections here because again it doesn't have to be exactly like we just want to make sure we get a working pose that makes sense with the anatomy that we built for ourselves Hopefully, <laughs> that still looks a little iffy. I'd still change it, make it something more of my style. But I think that was a pretty good learning experience. So let's go back and finish up tracing some of these for the last uh, 20 minutes here. find the references I'm using in the Pinterest link in the description. the end goal is to be able to have this mental library of all of these combinations so that you can be able to better create your own poses without having the exact reference every time. I'm not going to do her feet, they look weird. And 
without it, we have this. That's pretty nice. We get a really clear understanding of how this flow is going here. Having to guess a little bit here. That's definitely not supposed to be that big. I just added everything else on her chest in there because I was distracted. The clothing made me think it was all one shape. Sometimes I forget which way a cylinder is facing and I have to look at the uh, image again. You ever seen the tops of these?
This one should be pretty fun. This is not accurate because that's over here, but it's all right. This is super confusing. We have another finished one. Do a light. 
light shading on the stuff in the background. <laughs> Alright, that should help. Alright. I think that's a pretty good number we did. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Nice. Let's make it 18, and then we'll call it a night. This one I'm going to actually do the rib cage. They drew that line too. They added a lot of thickness to her. Usually this goes down before it goes out like that. Made her slim thick. the last one I hope this helped you out it helped me out a lot and this is one of the most recent things I did to really help me get my skills up there before I started doing a lot more of my own studies um, to show you guys an e oh, I can't show you guys an example I don't know if a lot of the ones I do <laughs> sometimes they're safe for work sometimes they're not so I can't remember but yeah I'll show you guys sometime but um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this stream. You learned a lot. And remember again, the references are in the description, first part of the description. It's a Pinterest link. And I will see you in the next one. Have a happy Friday. Have a great weekend, everyone. And I'm going to go ahead and raid on Twitch.